I've been having an urge to play a game that has Rob the Robot in it. So that looks like it narrows it down to four games. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Dude, don't you know there's one more option you have? Well, no, I don't know any other games where you can play as Rob. <laughs> Are you serious? You don't remember the game released on November 14th, 2005 for the Nintendo DS? That includes Rob. No, I don't. C can you show me the game? Well, well, it's right here in my pocket. Trust me, you'll find Rob. Mario Kart DS, being the fifth installment of the franchise, it introduced so much to the franchise. It introduced Mission Mode, it was the first Mario Kart game to have wireless online multiplayer, it had an emblem editor, and more. But enough explaining it. I need to see an action, and hopefully I can appease the Rob fan base as well. Here we go! The first thing we see booting up Mario Kart DS is what I think is Mario threatening me, and then we're off to commit road crimes. First thing we see on the title screen is that there's several options we can choose from. We're mainly going to look at the single player portion for now, because I forgot. I'm playing Mario Kart DS, of course I'm lonely and there's nobody around. Okay, here's multiplayer mode, and what can I say here? It's Mario Kart with friends, and while I can't experience this because I'm reviewing Mario Kart DS slash nobody wants to play with me, my memories of Mario Kart DS multiplayer were some to remember, especially with battle mode, but just like mission mode, we'll get to that later. Then we have the Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection Mode, or the Nintendo WFC. Why does that sound like a law firm office? Sadly, this mode doesn't work anymore, but it's still fun to mess with the settings. This screen looks like anything but Mario Kart. Well then, we have Records, which is just as straightforward as it can possibly be, just viewing all of my Baby Park World Record failures. Then we have the Edit section of the Options menu, and I spent way too much time in this menu as a kid. You can edit your nickname and have your very own emblem. You ever just use Mario Kart DS Emblem Editor as your shopping list? Okay, time to really get into Mario Kart DS with the single player mode. Hopping into the character select screen, we have 12 playable characters, with the two newcomers being Dry Bones and Rob. Mario Kart DS has a total of 36 carts, which is a staggering upgrade from Double Dash's 21 carts. Speaking of the carts, some of them make perfect sense, like Luigi in the Poltergust 4000, Yoshi in the Egg 1, and Donkey Kong in the Rambi Rider make sense. These are carts that represent the characters. Then you have Waluigi in an actual excavator! And it's called the Gold Mantis? Why? I love this edition, but it makes absolutely zero sense at all, and that's why I love this edition so much. The gameplay of Mario Kart DS is just how you'd expect it to be. It truly feels like Mario Kart on the go. To me, it's got some of the best controls in the series, and drifting in this game is just so good. Maybe a bit too good. You see, Mario Kart DS's drift can be exploited into what the Mario Kart community is called snaking basically drifting to the left and right to constantly get the mini turbo boost, so you are constantly boosting. That's part of the reason nobody wants to ever play this game with me. But if you have a problem with it, address the problem to the Nintendo WFC law firm. Maybe you'll get something sorted out. Two new items appear this time around, the Bullet Bill and the Blooper. The Bullet Bill is basically the here, let me help you out here item, because either A, you're actually bad at the game, or B, you got Mario Karted. It just shoots you to about 5th or 6th place while also having the chance to assassinate other racers on the way. Then the blooper is supposed to help, but it doesn't. Whenever I get this I want to throw the DS, because all it does is block the screen partially, which that isn't even that big of a threat. But when you have a bottom screen that has a bird's eye view of the track, it makes the blooper 100% useless. Another thing I wanted to mention about the items is that the blue spiny shell in Mario Kart DS, you can actually avoid it by pulling off a drift boost at the perfect time. And the window where you can pull it off is strict, I've only pulled this off twice. I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but if it isn't, the Nintendo WFC law firm probably have my photo on the wall. Alright, let's move on over to the track selection, and while we have 16 new tracks like most Mario Kart games in the past, we also have 16 older tracks dubbed the Retro Tracks. Finally, a Mario Kart game that truly respects history! I'm not gonna dive into the Retro Tracks just because I know I'll go over the other Mario Kart games in the future, so I'll just save those tracks for when the time comes. So for now, let's just go over the new tracks, or the Nitro tracks as the game calls them. 
figure eight circuit, the most generic a track can get. There's nothing really Mario related about it, but it's still fun sometimes. I've noticed the computer players can get really violent on this track, with them constantly ramming into you like a bunch of kids in an ice cream truck. It's still fun, but in the end, it's literally just a double-sided raindrop. Overall, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Yoshi Falls, a much shorter track with bridges and waterfalls. I remember liking this one as a kid, but now I'm not a huge fan. I don't know, it just seems like a very primitive predecessor to Water Park from Mario Kart 8. And I'm not a fan of water parks, so this gets a 5 out of 10. <laughs> Cheap Cheap Beach, a self-explanatory track with cheap cheeps and crabs getting in your way. It's a fun, peaceful little beach level, nothing groundbreaking. Like, if I was having a discussion with someone about Mario Kart DS and they said, Oh yeah, Cheap Cheap Beach is my favorite track! I'd respect their opinion and also cut off all ties with them. Overall though, pretty fun track, 7 out of 10. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion, this track is so good! Seeing the ominous mansion at the start of every lap, and also the mud section at the end, where there are walking trees that don't respect personal space, and inside the mansion you can see elements and references from the original GameCube game. The only thing that's disappointing here is that you're only inside the mansion for like 10 seconds each lap. I wish it was a bit longer for the stay in the mansion, but it's still a great track. <laughs> Desert Hills, the first one for the Fire Flower Cup. This one's also pretty good, with the pokies and the fire snakes that the angry sun from Super Mario Bros. 3 spits out. And speaking of mushrooms, this course can be hectic if you get them frequently, especially at the end of the track with the super windy turns. I give it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> Delfino Square, another masterpiece. It just feels so laid back and calming without being boring. It just has that jolly atmosphere that Super Mario Sunshine has. Another cool thing about the track is the boost bridge at the end. While it's cool, I always overhype it at the end and it ends up being disappointing. Very good track though. Waluigi Pinball. This is the best track in the game. And in my opinion, it's one of the best, if not the best, track in Mario Kart history. Wanna know why? Literally take two perfect things, Waluigi, and a quarter disposal unit, with a bunch of arcade elements thrown in. And my friend, you have a recipe for a good track. You start off by launching into the most lucid looking, psychedelic plunger tunnel I've ever seen. And then we make our way down the rolling rails, where you see the other steel balls roll down the table. These can be annoying sometimes, but not enough for me to legitimately get mad at them. And now we end up on the actual table. This wide open area is awesome for offensive item play, and the bumpers make things super hectic. All while the great and powerful Waluigi gazes upon your actions. The music on this track is one of the greatest pieces in all of Mario Kart. It's definitely a great course, and I have nothing bad to say about it. Okay, we've gone from great sandy hills to a jolly town square, experienced heaven on two screens. And how do you top this cup off? Shroom Ridge! This isn't a horrible track, but why would you end off a cup with this? This could have been one of the greatest cups in Mario Kart history, and this is how you end it? Just a generic road with semi-trucks and cars going on the left side of the road. It's just kind of boring, especially for the end of the cup. This is not a complaint in any way, but here in the US we drive on the right side of the road, and in other parts of the world people drive on the left, and the same goes with Shroom Ridge, so it kind of throws me off a bit when going down the road and thinking I'm safe. And there's just this massive semi-truck that destroys me. Anyway... <laughs> moving on to the Star Cup, we have DK Pass, our first and only snow-themed track in the game. I think this track is pretty alright. I like the secret item box on top of the hill and the jump at the end. And that's about it. The snowballs in this one are a little more annoying than the steel balls in Waluigi Pinball, just because that most of the track is so narrow, so there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. It's a fine track, but give me Mount Wario or DK Summon any day. Tick Tock Clock, another masterpiece track, and one that is based off the aggravating level from Super Mario 64. This one is just plainly a super fun track, with the rotating hands and gears all over, and the swinging pendulum is a nice touch. Again, this is a track that I don't have anything bad about it to say, but Waluigi Pinball is just slightly better. Mario Circuit. Every Mario Kart game has one, except 64, because for some reason it just had to break tradition. Now, Mario Kart DS's Mario Circuit is often called a forgettable one, and I've always wondered why. Then I played it again, and realized it wasn't too good. It's fine, just like the other generic tracks like Figure 8 and Shroom Ridge. The only thing that's really cool is the windy turns at the end, and that's not saying much. I like the view of Peach's Castle in the pipe tunnel. Both these things were in Mario Kart 64, so I'm not sticking up for Mario Circuit on DS.
Airship Fortress. I think the Flower Cup needs to take some lessons from the Star Cup on how to end the cup, because this is how you do it. Based off of the airship levels from Super Mario Bros. 3, this track delivers on being faithful to that NES game. There's rocky wrenches, bullet bills heading straight for your cranium, and constant flamethrowers that make me question what kind of wood this airship is made out of. And also the giant cannon that shoots you in the spiral base is awesome. To kick things off for the final set of Nitro tracks, the Special Cup, we have Wario Stadium. While it's not the prettiest course in the lineup, the fun elements like the ramps and the bumps make it up by a long shot. This track is just so fun to play, and it borrows the amazing song used in Waluigi Pinball as well. But it's missing the copy and pasted Wario faces from Wario Stadium and Mario Kart 64. Peach Gardens, another great track, with a bunch of shrubs, flowers, monty moles, and giant rabid cannonball dogs. This is a track that doesn't have too many unique qualities, but it's one that's genuinely fun to play, unlike Figure 8 and Shroom Ridge. I enjoy the section with all the giant hedges everywhere, and the giant rabid cannonball dogs running everywhere giving people rabies. Not too much to say on this track, but it's fun, no doubt. <laughs> Bowser's Castle. This Bowser's Castle is another one that's often forgotten about when Bowser's Castle is brought up, and unlike Mario Circuit, I don't know why. This one has lava, rotating platforms, and a giant Bowser in it. When you go up the giant spiral tower, you have a choice to stay on the spinning cylindrical platform, or you can be rejected by the kids at the school playground. Not the most epic Bowser's Castle, but it's still really good. <laughs> Lastly, for all the Nitro tracks, we have Rainbow Road, a staple across all the Mario Kart games to date. Yeah, this one isn't too great. Again, no racetrack in this game is bad, but some are just mediocre and forgettable. The only thing special about this Rainbow Road is the loop-de-loop -loop and the corkscrew. That's it. Take, for example, Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road. Sure, it was kinda long and dreadful, maybe even boring at times, but with the neon signs at every turn and the absolutely blissful music accompanied with the track, it makes for a positive experience. Mario Kart Double Dash, it has an awesome layout and you can see Mushroom City under you the whole time, it's cool. Mario Kart DS's Rainbow Road, and I'm not saying it's horrible, but it's my least favorite Nitro track in Mario Kart DS. Moving on to one of the greatest aspects in any Mario Kart game, except you and you, the battle mode. Looking through the choices, we have Balloon Battle. While I still prefer racing and doing Grand Prix, Balloon Battle is still a lot of fun. It's just standard Balloon Battle from times past, but Mario Kart DS offers a huge change. Instead of having three balloons, you start out with one balloon, and have five stored whenever you need them. You can either press and hold down the select button, or engage in asthmatic practices, then we have Shine Runners, which I remember not liking as a kid, but now it's pretty alright. You just run around and collect all the Shine Sprites, and once all the Shine Sprites are collected on the battle map, it's time to murder. Knocking opponents with items knocks a Shine Sprite out of them, and then you go over and collect that Shine Sprite. The clock ticks down, and the players with the lowest number of Shine Sprites gets eliminated, and the one who has the largest amount of Shine Sprites at the end of the game wins. This one's fun, but it's not a replacement for Balloon Battle in my opinion. If you're going to play Mario Kart DS Battle Mode, you can give this one a try, but most likely you'll end up going back to Balloon Battle. Again, not because it's bad, but Balloon Battle is THE Mario Kart Battle Mode. And now we have the battle maps. We'll just go down the line, I guess. Starting off with the Nintendo DS! This one's pretty fun. I don't have anything bad to say about it, other than it being a bit small. It's kind of like the GameCube battle map from Double Dash, but it actually has some form of elevation. And look, it's actually running Mario Kart DS. That's COOL! Twilight House. This one's pretty bad. I tolerate the other courses, but this one's pretty awful. It's almost like a maze, but it's so simplistic that it's hard to get around, if that makes sense. Also, the map is super ugly, so yeah, I won't be coming back anytime soon. Palm Shore. Another alright one, but it's still kind of frustrating. It looks pretty, and the size is decent. But the problem I have is the water constantly raising and lowering. When it's low, it's fine, but when the water's high, it's super annoying, because the water slows you down hard. You also can't drift when you're submerged, so when you're in the water, you better get out as fast as you can, because it makes you a sitting duck, especially for red shells. It's fine, but definitely not my favorite. <laughs> Tart Top. This one's alright. This one takes place on some sort of pastry. We don't know what it is, but if Donkey Kong is driving on it, I guess it's fine. This one's small, especially for 8 players, but it's still charming. I mean, wouldn't you want to assassinate other players on a giant, unidentifiable food? 
This one's cool, especially with the cream mounds and berries that when you run into them, they spew out otherworldly toxins, wash it off quickly before it eats your skin. A problem I have with this one is the item boxes are on top of the giant cream mountain and nowhere else. So it constantly feels like hit and run every time you go up it. Just hit the opponent, go back up, hit the opponent, go back up. It gets really repetitive. It's still fun though, but it's nothing like the one we're talking about next. Blockfort. We have the greatest battle map in Mario Kart history. It's simplistic, but so fun at the same time. Just laying banana peels in this track is fun. The bridges are so narrow that when you place a banana peel on one, it may be challenging or flat out impossible to get past it. Hey look, the Nintendo WFC has another thing to call me by. I can't believe Nintendo actually tried to replace this map multiple times. Sure, Block City from Double Dash was okay, and Block Plaza from Wii made me want to vomit every time I played it, but nothing will ever come close to Block Fort from Mario Kart 64. Last battle map, we have Pipe Plaza from Double Dash. This one's good, but not great. This map is way too small for a battle. I could see four people playing on this map at the most, but not eight. This map is so chaotic, you could get hit any second, either a bomb or a stray banana peel or a green shell. Everything is out to get you here. One fun thing you can do to try and forget you're being hunted is to put banana peels in front of these pipes. I think they know my address now. Overall, this one is too chaotic, and it can be unfair, but that also applies to everything in Mario Kart. Okay, we have one more mode to check out, and it's a mode Nintendo refuses to put in any other Mario Kart game, and it gives Mario Kart DS an identity of its own. Mission Mode, a mode full of 63 preset challenges to test how Mario Kart ds -y you are. There's driving through numbered gates, collecting coins, breaking item boxes, murder, driving backwards, drift challenges, breaking wooden boxes, reaching the finish before someone else, and murder again with boss battles against Big Bully, Irock, Goomboss, King Boo, and King Babom. I refuse to say Big Babom because he even wears a crown. I respect royalty. Chief Chili, and if you get one star rank or higher on every mission, you can go up against Wiggler on Mushroom Bridge. Not any other track, it had to be Mushroom Bridge. This mode is insanely fun, trying to go for all three stars on each mission, or getting the best times on a mission. It's really fun. It just makes it more confusing on why this hasn't been added in any other game. I could see this being a great addition in a game like Mario Kart Wii or possibly 8. It does make DS have an identity of its own like I previously mentioned, but I really do not care about that at all. I want to see this mode return. Alright, that was Mario Kart DS. Looking back at it, some parts are better than I remember, and some a lot worse. But I have a huge soft spot for the century. It's the first Mario Kart I ever played, and it's the first memory I have with gaming entirely. This is truly my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. I've played this one easily the most out of every entry. And while I play the newer Mario Kart games as well, and very frequently, I still go back to this one a lot. I really love this game. Wait, where's Rob? Oh, hey, I got a message on PictoChat, society's number one social media. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, it's a message from the fellow Rob fan that I met earlier. It says to win the Mirror Special Cup. Well, alright then, time to unlock Rob. I, 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 I can't believe it, I can actually play as Rob. He's kind of mid.